After a frustrating series loss down in Tampa, the Mariners aren't going very far. They're now in Miami for a rare three-game set with the Marlins, which will feature some pretty great pitching matchups. We're excited about it. We're going to tell you how the M's can get back into the win column on today's episode of Locked On Mariners. Colby, hit it. You are Locked On Mariners, your daily Seattle Mariners podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. It is Friday, April 29th, 2022, and this is the Locked On Mariners podcast. Thank you so much for making us your first listen of the day. We are free and available on all platforms. I'm your host, Titan Gonzalez, reporter and editor over at allseahawks.com. Joined, as always, by my co-host, Colby Patno. Be sure to follow the show on Twitter at LO underscore Mariners. You can follow me at Dane Gonzalez. It's D-A-N-E-G-N-Z-L-Z. And Colby at CPAT11. That's C-P-A-T-1-1. Be sure to also check out our Patreon, where we talk about the Mariners even more and also get into some non-baseball talk twice a week visit patreon.com forward slash control the zone for more information on that if you are interested and want more of us and if this is your first time joining us here on the lockdown mariners podcast welcome to the show if you like what you hear give us a follow or subscribe wherever you listen to this and if you're watching us on youtube hit the subscribe button down below turn on the notification bell and give this video a thumbs up we greatly appreciate it so the mariners are kicking off a three-game set with the Marlins down in Miami tonight, and uh, we're getting treated to some pretty sweet pitching matchups. We're going to be talking about the series. We're also going to be talking about Kyle Lewis some because, hey, there are finally some updates on him. But first, Mitch Haniger is back, activated off of the COVID list. Matt Cook was DFA to uh, make room for Haniger on the roster. Colby, Haniger was out for nearly two weeks and by his own admission was dealing with a pretty gnarly bout of COVID and his time away from the team. No rehab stint for him. He's jumping right back into the swing of things. What should we expect from Hanniger in his return? Yeah, not much. Um, As we all know, Mitch Hanniger is highly overrated. Um, Known Mitch Hanniger hater Colby Patton is back in full force. (laughs) Yes. Um, No, but um, I I would hope that Hanniger would lengthen the lineup some. Uh, He he was okay uh, before he went on the COVID IL. you know, definitely hit some home runs, but he kind of mm. looked like the same guy he was last year, and that's a bit of an issue, at least for me. Um, but hopefully he'll lengthen the lineup. He does add some more pop to it. Uh, should push J.P. Crawford down a little bit. Um, should pr- push Suarez down a little bit. It kind of adds some more probability because Hanniger's not going to strike out a ton, and you do have guys in your lineup right now that are striking out a ton, uh, namely uh, Jared Kalnick and, and Julio Rodriguez. So... Hopefully this lengthens the lineup a little bit. Um, it would be great if he could come back and, and you know, hit 280 instead of 245 um, and, you know, put up a 340 on base instead of a 320 on base. But, uh, yeah, it certainly adds some more power. It lengthens the lineup a little bit. I think it gives them some more options in the leadoff spot. That's something they mm-hmm. might explore a little bit. Uh, Frazier's been okay there, but he has been kind of up and down, hit or miss. Um, and, you know, I, I think one – I wonder if maybe – against right-handed or left-handed pitching, maybe they're going to try Hanniger in the leadoff spot, or, or maybe they're going to try France in the leadoff spot. Mm. Um, and it just gives you more options. And it, it also deepens your bench because, you know, Abraham Toro, probably the odd man out or Jared Kelnick uh, on a, on a day-to-day basis. So uh, the bench gets a little bit better. The lineup gets a little bit longer. You become harder to pitch to. And, you know, that's if Mitch Hanniger is only an average bat and he's probably better than that. Um, Mm-hmm. I, feel, I feel like he. I mean, we have to assume that he's better. But also, I, I don't want to expect too much from Mitch right away. I think maybe it's going to take a week. Or he hasn't seen live pitching in, in 11 days. Like, that's mm-hmm. that's not something that you can just pick up again and, and do well. So maybe it's going to take him a little while before we get to that point. I suspect mm-hmm. he DHs quite a bit here over, there, over the next uh, week or so mm-hmm. just to try and kind of ease him back in because you know, he, he had talked about the reason why he wasn't um, activated in Tampa – is that you know he just wasn't quite feeling uh, physically a hundred percent. He was he was fine. Um, he was testing negative, but he just wasn't quite there physically. Yeah. And so I, I would do wonder maybe they just try and take it easy on him a little bit. Yeah. Now 
uh, I believe you mentioned um, that you know DH in the National League, so you you should be able to DH them here. I would I would recommend that to the Mariners, quite frankly, especially with that big outfield in Miami. Um, but yeah, Hanniger before going on the COVID list, one seventy six, two hundred four seventy one with a one hundred WRC plus. So he was quite literally an average hitter uh, before uh, going on the COVID list. Um, obviously, that's just in uh, eight games. So take that for what you will. Uh, but obviously a lot of power there, hopefully a bit more in terms of getting on base. Uh, hopefully he gets the uh, the walks up because the walks were only at 2.9% before he uh, he went on the COVID list. Um, but yeah, you know, it, it, the one thing that comes from this that I'm kind of curious to hear your thoughts on, because Jesse Winker continues to struggle. At least the, the results are not there. He's having good at bats, but the mm-hmm. results are not really coming. You know, he's hitting the ball really hard. I think he had a, I think there was a stat that Aaron Goldsmith rattled off on the broadcast yesterday that he hit like six balls over 99 miles per hour um, in Tampa Bay and only two of them resulted in, in actual hits. Um, so, you know, and obviously he's, he's uh, taking his walks. He's one of the, you know, he has high, one of the highest walk rates in um, in baseball right now. But would you consider maybe moving him down the lineup now that Hanniger is back? Go more Frazier, France, Hanniger, Suarez, Crawford, and then maybe think about Winker like six or so until the results start to come for him? I'd actually might probably rather go the other way, moving Winker mm-hmm. up uh, in the lineup uh, because the only way he's going to get through this is just to continue to, to get more at-bats. And so mm-hmm. it's, it's one of those things. Winker is still, even if – even if Winker is going to continue to hit the ball right at people, if you put Winker in the leadoff spot, he's still a 333 on base guy. Mm. Um, it's pretty good for a guy who's not hitting. And when he does start to hit, if he's in your leadoff spot, you're going to reap the benefits from that. So at least against right-handed pitching, I might actually go the other way and try and jumpstart the bat by getting him a few more opportunities. It's not a ton more if he's hitting thir- first or third. I mean, it's it's roughly the same number of at-bats. Maybe an extra at-bat or two in the week, but – that can make a difference sometimes. So I'd actually go the other way. I, I think if I'm moving anybody down in the lineup, it, it's probably Frazier. Um, and I, I don't think there needs to be any drastic changes to the lineup. Uh, not, not yet. Um, <clears throat> it's, it's still, it's still early. So um, I, I probably just, you know, rolled what they have, which I believe Hanniger hitting cleanup uh, between Winker and, and Suarez is, is kind of how they've done it. So um, I would actually probably, move Winker up if I was going to move him at all. Sure. That's interesting. And the the best, uh, to me, the, the biggest benefit, rather, of Hanniger coming back is that it does take some pressure off the likes of uh, Jared Kelnick and, and Julio Rodriguez a little mm-hmm. bit here, and you're not going to have to play those guys as much. Now, of course, you don't really want to run an outfield out there consistently where you have Mitch Hanniger and Jesse Winker manning the corners, especially with Hanniger here in the early going uh, coming back from COVID and trying to recover physically from that. Um, but yeah, it, it also means that, uh, you know, even if you're running uh, Hanniger in the, uh, in the DH spot that, you know, maybe there's some more opportunities here to give Kelnick and Rodriguez a break um, every, every now and then. So mm-hmm. um, hopefully that, that, you know, like you mentioned, it, it, it lengthens the lineup and hopefully it, it kind of, eliminates at least a little bit of that void that's been there towards the bottom of the Mariners lineup where it's just, you know, seven, eight, nine. I mean, you're pretty lucky if you're going to get one hit or at least, or even just one base runner out of that combo. Um, mm-hmm. And now, you know, getting friends back, getting Hanniger back, being able to alternate those guys out of the DH spot. Um, that's going to be, that's going to be a boon for, for this Mariners team moving forward and for this Mariners offense, which, you know, uh, has, mm, is overachieved a too strong of a word with no. Yeah. Cause like no. they've, they've pretty much overachieved in, in, in Mitch Hanniger's absence and Luis Torrens mm-hmm. absence, you know, they exploded for all those runs against the Royals they took advantage of some bad pitching staffs. Um, yeah. Some mistakes even then, as well. Yeah, a lot of, race. a lot of the big, a lot of the big scoring games, most of that damage came in one or two innings, and then the rest mm. of the game they were pretty meh. So, uh, yeah, I think overachieve is a fair word. I, I, they're outperforming what should be expected of them in terms of, like, run per game. Sure, sure. Yeah, so it's um, 
it just creates more length for this lineup. It creates more possibility for this lineup, more probability for this lineup as well, uh, more sustainability. Um, it's good. And um, and it's also, you know, just a great thing in general that, hey, the COVID uh, outbreak, if you will, I mean, it, is it much of an outbreak when it was only five guys? We'll say it's an outbreak anyway, um, just, just for time's sake. But um, it kind of stopped there. Right with Paul Seawald and the coaching staff, when those cases came through, that was it for the Mariners. So they dodged a huge bullet here, and that's uh, that's huge for the Mariners as well. And now they're back to full strength. We'll see how you know Hanniger recovers and, and Paul Seawald, etc. Uh, but yeah, this is uh, this is good stuff for the Mariners who are eleven and eight, and they're going into a fairly favorable matchup with the Marlins. We're going to get to that later on the show. But now, speaking of outfielders, we finally have an update on Kyle Lewis from Jerry Depoto himself. We're going to get you caught up about Lewis's progress and discuss when we might see him in just a moment. But first, let's talk about Built Bar. Summer is coming, and with summer, you're going to need some food on the go. Built Bars are the perfect snack to take with you on family vacations. Just throw them in your bags, in your kid's backpack. Make sure that everyone has a bar so you are fueled for your summer adventures. And the best part about Built Bars, they are healthy and delicious. So no more sacrificing delicious food for health. With Built Bar, you can have both. And it's easy. All you have to do is go to Built.com and order right now. And most Built Bars contain 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, 4 net carbs, and 17 grams of protein. Now compare that to a candy bar, which usually has around 240 calories, 30 grams of sugar, and dozens of net carbs go to built.com to get all your favorites banana cream pie raspberry double chocolate and so many more they are all delicious and new flavors are coming out all the time so check them out at built.com use promo code locked 15 that's l-o-c-k-e-d-1-5 for 15 percent off your order again that's l-o-c-k-e-d-1-5 for 15 percent off your order at built.com this episode of Lockdown Mariners is also brought to you by Blue Nile. Whether she prefers a statement piece or everyday subtle elegance, BlueNile.com has fine jewelry options for every mom. Mark Mother's Day with something enduring. Classic diamond stud earrings, elegant tennis bracelets, birthstone pennants, and so much more. This Mother's Day, give mom something she'll treasure forever with fine jewelry from BlueNile.com and Locked On Sports listeners get $50 off $500. This podcast exclusive is only good through Mother's Day. Use promo code LOCKEDON, that's L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N, Plus, every order is insured, ships free, and arrives in discreet packaging that won't give away what's inside. It's pretty convenient if you're like me and live a thousand plus miles away from mom. So shop stress-free and find your forever peace. Go to BlueNile.com today. You're listening to Locked On Mariners. Thank you again for making us your first listen of the day. For your next listen, check out the Locked On Now podcast. There are recaps of MLB games with analysis from our local experts, taking fans through the season like no other network. It is free and available wherever you get your podcasts, just like us. So Colby, Jerry Depoto finally uh, had some updates on Kyle Lewis. He was Lewis was supposed to get in some spring training action towards the end of spring for the Mariners. Uh, around the last couple games of spring for them. That didn't happen. And then kind of just radio silence for about three weeks on him. We had no clue what was going on. We had been asked what's going on, and we didn't have any information on that. But finally, DePoto speaking to the media the other day, uh, earlier this week, t- uh, said that Lewis is in extended spring training right now. He is getting reps in. He's getting about four to five at-bats per game down there, and he's playing some left field and also DHing quite a bit and it seems like he is getting closer to a rehab stint now we talked about Jared Kelnick and Julio Rodriguez and some of their struggles last segment if those continue how much of a boon would getting Kyle Lewis back be yeah it'd be pretty significant because again we're talking about lengthening the lineup and the bench um and he said he didn't get much we didn't get much specifics about Lewis um just that he had been playing in games he has played some in the field. He's DH some. We don't know if that's necessarily center field or not. Um, but Lewis is when he's healthy, is the best center fielder you have. Um, and I'm not sure it's that close, which seems like a problem. But Lewis is okay enough out there that it's not detrimental. And obviously, then you can move Julio to left and you know Winker or whatever. Like it's it's easier. So 
And also Lankton's lineup. I feel pretty good about Kyle Lewis being at least a league average bat, a 100 WRC plus guy. Uh, mm-hmm. The numbers back it up too. Um, again, he's a right-handed bat. You can platoon him a little bit with Jesse Winker. He's not bad against righties at all either. So you can have him play four times a week, three times a week as you kind of ease him in. He's a nice piece to have off the bench. He has some power. He to draw some walks. Um, it just it makes your entire team better because you know whether Lewis plays every day, and as a result, you have to send Kelnick down. Well, Kelnick is going to get you know valuable at bats down in AAA. And you probably aren't going to feel the need to rush him, assuming that everybody else stays healthy. You can really work on some things down there. Um, and if Lewis is the part-time player, well, then you have this great option off the bench. If a tough lefty's coming in and Jesse Winker's due up, you can make that switch. If you need defense at the end of the game and you want to take Mitch Haniger out, you can mm-hmm. make that switch. Uh, he just solves a lot of problems for you. A healthy Kyle Lewis solves a lot of problems without having to be really anything more than he's been in his throughout his entire right. career. He just has to be average and he's taking the spot of jared kelnick who's below average right now he's taking the spot of dylan moore who's i mean different topic um so yeah he's just better than those guys are um and he comes with a higher with a higher floor and honestly you know still plenty of ceiling uh you know Mm. I, i think a lot of people just assume that lewis is just kind of you know this fine outfielder but there's still 30 home run power in there there's still Mm-hmm. You know, above average center field defense in there, and there's still the possibility that he hits 270 with a 350, 360 on base and a 500 slugging. Like that is not out of the question um, yeah. when we're talking about Kyle Lewis. So we've it, still it just help everybody. We've still never seen him for a full season. Yeah, like he's been up for bits and pieces of three seasons, but basically four months total. Yeah, nowhere close to a full season's worth of games in his career in general, too. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, there's still a lot to be uncovered there and hopefully he can get back to full strength here and, uh, be able to stay there as well. That's the important thing is staying healthy for Kyle Lewis and keeping his legs, um, you know, healthy as well. And I I would assume that the way that they're probably going to go about it because they've been so utterly cautious with him. And, you know, they said during the off season that anything Kyle Lewis can give us, give us is a bonus. Mm -hmm. And so going off of that, I would think that we're probably not going to see him in center field. As long as Julio Rodriguez is on the big league club, I would assume that we're probably not going to see Kyle Lewis in center field unless there's an uh, like an off day for Julio here and there, and maybe they try to put him out there. But even then, considering how cautious they've been with him, I'm just not sure if that's something we would see. Right. I, I think if you're like if your outfield defense for the day is something like Julio and left. Lewis in center and Kelnick in right, that's a legitimate, solid, average defensive outfield. Mm -hmm. Um, So there's value if you can get that. Now, obviously, that means Winker and and Hanniger, you know, are either both getting the day off or one's DHing and the other one's getting the day off. So, I mean, it's not ideal, but we have to get to that situation for that to even matter. So, right. um, And right now, we, for that to happen, Kelnick or Kelnick has to start to hit and Lewis has to get healthy and stay healthy. And so, Mm-hmm. I mean, that's – and honestly, Julio has to start to hit a little bit more. Definitely trending in the right direction, but still. Um, you know, just the thing with Lewis is I, I think people – last year in just 36 games, 246, 333, 392, but he was trending up yeah. um, before the injury. Uh, he had five home runs, um, you know, in the 36 games, so it kind of looked like he was starting to hit with a little bit more power, getting to his pole side. Strikeouts were high. I mean, it's – it's going to be a part of Kyle Lewis's game. Strikeouts are going to be elevated a little bit, but only twenty five percent. So not nothing that you can't that you don't already have in your lineup. And he yeah. was walking eleven percent of the time. That's really good. So mm-hmm. Lewis just makes everything else better because it makes it easier on every yeah. other player. And it's just you're getting closer and closer to that lineup of nine guys where everybody's at least an average bat. And that's yeah. an extremely difficult lineup to work through. Um, and that's that's not even counting the bench where you're going to have guys like. Murphy or Torrens and, and Toro um, and whatever outfielder's not playing for the day. Like Lewis just makes you that much better. Mm-hmm. I, I think it might seriously be a, a two, three win swing um, in the first couple months that Lewis is back. It might not look that way in war, but just what he allows everybody else to do and what he gives the Mariners off the bench or as a starter, I think it, I think it can add two or three wins to the, to the team's total. 
Yeah, I wholeheartedly agree with that because right now, this exactly shows you what we have been preaching over mm-hmm. the last year or so. The Mariners don't have enough outfielders. They don't have too many outfielders. They don't have this log jam. Look, you know, Jared Kelnick still might be a, a really good baseball player. He still might even reach his, his relative mm-hmm. ceiling at some point in his career. Julio is, I, I, you know, and he's been playing better as of late, but he, he might still take a while to reach his ceiling. Um, these things don't just happen immediately in most cases, right? I, I, I know mm-hmm. that there was a lot of expectations put on both of those guys, but right now, as things currently stand, and if we're just talking from a defensive standpoint, right, you have two good defensive outfielders, like decent defensive outfielders where they should probably play. You know, Jared, Jared's look good in right field. Jared's look right good in field. right field. Jared is a right fielder and a pretty yeah. good one. Yeah. Um, by the way, real fast on, on Kelnick, since I know, guys, he has fewer career plate appearances than Kyle Lewis. Yeah. And he's 22 years old. Yeah. 22. Take yeah. a chill pill. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I don't I don't get this whole thing that's been going on in the uh, Mariners fandom where a lot of people have just written off Jared Kelnick. Yeah, like, oh, and it's a bust. And it's like, yeah. really? Already, yeah. huh? Okay. Yeah. Like, we haven't even seen him for a full season's worth of games yet, and it's just, uh, yeah. Uh, that's a whole nother conversation. But the point is, right now, as things currently stand, Jared Kelnick isn't really helping you much right now. No overall uh julio is starting to help you a little bit more but things are still a little shaky there mitch hanniger is a he's not a good defensive outfielder he's a he's a good hitter but he's not a good defensive outfielder and there you go again <laughs> i knew i knew exactly when i said that that you were going to do that and then jesse winker of course has been abysmal in left field defensively um yeah. and right now you know the results aren't there at the plate as far as hits go um so yeah you need more outfield help and Kyle Lewis helps with that where you don't have to give up anything via trade. You don't have to spend any money. You don't have to do anything. He's there. This is a quality major league outfielder who is in your system right now. And he is getting closer and closer to playing. Let me ask you this though. Obviously you're, you know, we're not there. We don't know exactly what's going on with Kyle Lewis's health, but just going off of how these things typically go, uh, when do you think, uh, can, if, if DePoto's, um, what DePoto said is, is pretty much in line with what's going to happen and he does get a uh, rehab stint soon. When do you think we might see Kyle Lewis? Um, last week of May, first week mm-hmm. of June. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's going to be a pretty extensive rehab assignment. Yeah. I think he gets 20 days as a hitter. So I would expect him to take most of that. Um, which means to me, Kelnick has about a month to start posting, mm-hmm. um, more consistency. And it, Kelnick doesn't have to hit 350 to save his job. Like, mm-hmm. It's not that by the end of May, Kelnick's average has to be all the way up to 250 or he's going down. It just in the month of May, can you hit 240 with a league average on base? That's probably enough to keep him up. Um, right. but, and yeah, also I, I, another thing to keep in mind here is the Mariners have their own grading system. They have their yeah. own grading system on swing decisions and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. So if they just see that there is better quality coming from Jared Kelnick on that front, maybe the results still aren't there. Maybe he's having kind of a Jesse Winker type of slump where it's like right. the quality of the content uh, contact is great, but it's just, it's not, he's not finding grass. Right. Then yeah, maybe he saves his job that way as well. So there's there's a bunch of ways like that like Kelnick can stay on this team, and there's uh, and there's absolutely ways to fit all these guys on the same roster as well right now. And right, and by the way, remember Kyle Lewis does still have an option. Kelnick mm-hmm. has uh, two, so like just because Kelnick or just because Lewis is like finished with his rehab, doesn't mean Seattle has to call him up if everybody else is playing well. Mm-hmm. Just leave Lewis down there. Um, yeah, there, there's no roster crunch with the outfielders yet. I just it doesn't exist yet. So when it does, we'll talk about it. But right now, it's a non-issue. No, they they need more help is mm-hmm. the thing, and, and hopefully Kyle Lewis can provide that. So uh, let's uh, turn our attention to this weekend series because we've got pitching matchups galore. Oh my, it's going to be amazing, especially Sunday. Woo-hoo-hoo. Oh, that's <laughs> going to be a lot of fun. Uh, let us get you set for a very exciting matchup between the Marlins and Mariners in just a moment. But first, 
Let me tell you about the fine folks over at Bet Online. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all your betting stats and sports info. Find all the latest sports developments, league reviews, and news, including this year's basketball playoffs and the start of the Major League Baseball season. Bet Online is your continued source for all your sporting wagering information from live betting to playoffs, esports, and more. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. Bet Online is where the game starts. So tonight, we got Matt Brash versus Eliza Hernandez. Tomorrow, we got Robbie Ray versus Jesus Lazardo. And then Sunday, oh my Sunday, we have the American League leader in ERA, Logan Gilbert, against Sandy Alcantara. Oh, possibly NL Cy Young contender. Sandy mm-hmm. Alcantara and maybe AL Cy Young contender <clears throat> Logan Gilbert. Who knows? Probable AL pitcher of the month Logan Gilbert. Um, exactly. Yeah. It's uh wow this this series is going to be a lot of fun. Let's start with Brash here though. Brash is going tonight, mm-hmm. yeah. and uh, he struggled with the control. Uh, that's being nice, by the way. Saying that he struggled, <laughs> that is being nice. Um, do you think there's uh the, the, he there's hope? For him to uh, to get back on track here against a uh, a pretty decent Marlins lineup, sure. Um, there's always hope because Brash is a guy who can basically throw a no hitter anytime he's on the mound. <laughs> like mm-hmm. like he's not got that kind of stuff. So um, of course there's hope, but is it likely? Uh, I mean it's it's not a it's not a brilliant lineup. It, it Jazz Chisholm's off to a great start. I really like him. Mm-hmm. And you have mm-hmm. Aguiar, Soler, Sanchez, Garcia. Some good players, some, you know, Brian Anderson, Joey Wendell, Miguel Rojas, and Jacob Stallings. They're, it's not it's not a powerful lineup. Um, so it's just it's kind of tough because we can't even sit here and say, like, oh, yeah, Brash can just go out there and just, you know, throw it down the middle, just be very aggressive. He's always aggressive. It doesn't mean he's going to throw strikes. We just don't yeah. know what we're going to get with Matt Brash. So, um, yeah, I mean – Literally anything could happen. He could go six shutout innings, or he can, you know, go two and, and walk eight and be out of the game. <laughs> I mean, it's literally yeah. anything is possible, which adds some excitement, but also some trepidation um, when, when you're out there and, and, like, you know, hey, we just had to have the bullpen cover a lot of innings a couple of days ago. Thankfully, Flexen did a great job yesterday. Um, we have some reinforcements, some fresh arms in the pen now. So, yeah, hopefully five innings, two, three runs. I mean, at this based on what we saw last time out, I would even take the 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 Astros start. Um, just yeah. just be competitive. Um, mm-hmm. and I think he will. I, I think he's going to have a, a a better day than he did last time out. But again, literally anything can happen. Yeah, and look now, you know he's got enough few starts under his belt. It's time to, to it's time to reel things in a little bit here for him. And uh, mm-hmm. maybe, you know, just calming down and, and focusing on his game plan and really hunkering down and, and, and executing that will will go a long way for him. And, and maybe we'll see some better control out of him. But it's a, you know, it's a it's a risky game that you play because, you, like you said, you really don't know. You can get seven shutout innings from him or you could get, you know, like you said, the, the seven, eight walks and he's out by the third. Um just mm-hmm. that that he's kind of a boomer bust guy right now as he's uh, as he's currently constructed and that's why a lot of people like him as a as a reliever more than a starter right mm-hmm. you kind of see that but i you know me being the Matt Brash stand that i am yeah. i believe and uh he's going six scoreless tonight so you're I'm you're going a perfect it. game for Matt Brash okay. <laughs> yeah exactly exactly um, <laughs> all right maybe um, not that aggressive though but i'm going i'm going six scoreless for Matt Brash tonight. okay that'd be great uh, by the way, Hernandez, who's going for Miami tonight, interesting guy. Um, mm-hmm. Gives up quite a bit of hard contact. He will not walk you. He's going to be in the zone. Um, doesn't have tremendous stuff. It's 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 Chris Flexen esque. Maybe a little bit more strikeout in his mm-hmm. game. Um, and the, uh, the the metrics say he's been a little bit unlucky. His xERA is two full runs lower than his actual ERA. Uh, but it's mostly fastball slider. So. Uh, fastball is eh, 91 miles an hour. It's gotten touched up pretty heavily, so he's going to be slider heavy. Um, and the Mariners just dropped in a lineup. Uh, it is uh, about what you would expect, although Crawford remains ahead of Suarez. Um, so, yeah, there's an opportunity here for the Mariners to get on, on Hernandez, but 
he's better than his ERA would suggest right now. Or at least he has been. But For it's sure. going to be fastball slider. Get on the fastball. Hunt it early. And uh, see if you can come away with a with this game one win. Set yourself up to try and win the series over the weekend. All right. So the uh, the Marlins have struck out quite a bit this year. Um, mm-hmm. Let me check their numbers real quick here. Yeah, they are fifth right now, um, or tied fifth with the the Diamondbacks. Twenty five point one percent strikeout rate for uh, for Marlins hitters. So is tomorrow going to be finally the time we see a high strikeout performance by Robbie Ray? <laughs> Because I've been yeah, waiting I for hope, it, man. I, I hope so. Um, yeah, we just, you know, this last start of it in April, we haven't seen, you know, we haven't seen even like non-Cy Young vintage Robbie Ray. Uh, he's never, he hasn't had a start where he struck out a, a batter printing all year. So mm-hmm. that's that's highly unusual. And we saw the velocity slowly start to tick up his last start. I really hope the slider is sharp. I, I, would, I would absolutely trade uh, Robbie Ray getting shelled for the slider to be plus again, like just one start for just to see a plus slider, you know, more than once or twice, like get jumped on, but have, have the good slider. I, w- I would make that trade, but yeah, it's, it's funny. Kind of look at like the, how these teams are built. I, I like the Marlins. I think they're a fun team, especially with the pitching. Um, but you, you look at like for, when you look at the strikeout rate, that's where things get really crazy. Um, because in the Mariners K percentage, there's a lot of red, which for hitters is very good. Mm-hmm. When you look at the Marlins K percentage, there's a lot of blue, and that's that's obviously bad. So these are two teams. One team appears to have value guys who put the ball in play. The other team is like, eh, whatever. You strike out, you strike out. So two kind of different, uh, you know, two kind of differently built offenses. Uh, but I I think this is going to be a really fun series. So hopefully Robbie Ray, uh, who's been fine. I mean, it, it's not like Robbie Ray's been bad, but. He hasn't quite lived up to expectation yet, and and maybe this start is the one that uh, kind of kicks him uh, down that road. Yeah, yeah, just a six three nine Ks per nine right now for Robbie Ray. That is uh, well below his uh, career average, which is eleven point. It's eleven point ten. That's his career average. Right. <clears throat> Nobody now. in Major League history strikes out more batters per nine innings pitched than Robbie Ray, and there he's at six point nine this year. Something's got to give. Yeah. All right. Let's not belabor this anymore. Logan Gilbert, Sandy Alcantara. I mean, and and it's coming on my birthday, by the way, folks. So this is just Nobody great cares. for me. Nobody yeah, cares. I know, I know, I know. I expected that as well. It's just yeah, it's predictable. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, there's true. a there's another knock for you know the two people that go in the YouTube comments and say that you uh, you hate me or something or whatever. <laughs> we actually really like each other, by the way, guys. Um, well. He he won't admit it on 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 uh, on record, but uh, yeah. Uh, so, you, you didn't invite me to your birthday, so I'm like, oh. uh, it's, it's, I mean, hey, you're welcome to pay the eight hundred dollars to come up to Toronto. <laughs> See, if <laughs> but, we were really friends, you'd pay that for me. So, well. um. <laughs> <laughs> so Logan Gilbert's been uh, really good this year. Mm-hmm. Um, Obviously, you know, as I mentioned, he's uh, leading the American League in ERA, uh, you know, 040 ERA right now. N- basically a strikeout per nine, uh, eight, eight, seven uh, case per nine right now. So he could be better in that regard. Uh, and I think he will be eventually. But uh, yeah, you know, we've been talking about this Marlins lineup, all the strikeouts. What do you uh, what do you think we're going to see from Logan Gilbert in this um, this matchup between potentially two Cy Young candidates? I was thinking about this the other day, and I was wondering, do you think it's possible that Logan Gilbert just isn't like a massive strikeout guy? Like, not that he's not going to get strikeouts, but like maybe instead of being like 11 or 10 and a half, he's closer to like nine, nine and a half. Mm. Um, because he is up in the zone a lot, and it's, it's he gets fly ball. It's, it's kind of like Felix. You know, in Felix's prime, he was like eight and a half, maybe nine K per nine, but it was just so much weak contact. And, and I mean, that it was just, you know what I mean? It's just, he didn't have to strike guys out to be elite. And I wonder maybe Gilbert's going to be that way. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a really good matchup for him. A lot of right-handed bats, a lot of swing and miss, um, a lot of guys who try to do damage, a lot of, a lot of big swingers. Um, so the fastball up and it's with Gilbert, it's all about the, the secondary. Does he have a secondary? Um, if he does, he can dominate. If he doesn't, it's probably still going to go five, six and give up one or two runs because that, that's just who Logan Gilbert is right now. So uh, yeah, I would expect I would suspect that he pitches well, uh, pitching in Florida, his his home state, uh, threw very well uh, against uh, Tampa. 
So I, I would think that he's going to be still pretty amped, um, and I think he's going to I think he's going to show up show out pretty well against uh, a good but not great Miami Marlins uh, offense. And then tell the folks about uh, Sandy Alcantara because I mean this is one of, <laughs> you and I both love Sandy Alcantara. Yes. Unfortunately, oh, yeah. he signed an extension with the Marlins this offseason, so mm-hmm. no no hopes of uh, getting him because that was a a thought there for a second. Apparently, the Mariners did check in on his availability last uh, last summer, uh, but that didn't go anywhere, of course. But uh, yeah, Alcantara is sick. He reminds me a lot. Of Felix Hernandez, <laughs> he, he really just like young young Felix Hernandez. Mm. Uh, he was throwing like ninety nine miles an hour, um, and he just has wicked off speed stuff, and nobody can square him up. Doesn't get a tremendous amount of strikeouts, only thirty eighth percentile in strikeouts, and does walk some guys on occasion. Thirty eighth percentile in walk percentage. Um, you know, it's it's not it's above league. It's ten point one percent this year. Uh, Major league average is eight point four. But obviously, the year before it was six percent. Year before that, eight point seven. It's it's about league average. It's, it's so it's not great command. Young Felix never had great command, and to be fair, old Felix never had great command either. Um, it's not like insane strikeout numbers, although he is capable of, of you know putting up impressive totals now and then. Uh, and it's it's not even like just insane spin rates or anything like that. It's just wicked nasty stuff that's all backed up by this this incredible fastball that's. Averaging ninety seven point five miles per hour this year, and he backs it up with a with a very good slider. The fastball slider are basically unhittable. Um, the pitch he's had a, the hardest time with this year has been a sinker, and that was a really good pitch for him last year. Alcantara is probably the best pitcher that nobody talks about. Yeah, he yeah. is a legitimate Cy Young contender every single year. Absolute bargain for the Marlins. I'm mad. I'm jealous. And there were times where we talked about, would you give up Julio for Alcantara? And I was like, mm. <laughs> probably, <laughs> probably not, but mm. I'd really think about it. Like the dude is great and we're going to see him on Sunday. And, you know, personally, I hope he struggles because <laughs> yeah, I'm obviously. Win. Yeah. But I don't think he will. I think no. that's going to be, you know, first team to score three or whoever gets to the bullpen first is, is going to have a good shot at that. But mm-hmm. Alcantara is, is electric, guys. His, his stuff moves like a foot, like his yeah. fat. You're just it's it's insane. Yeah, he's nuts. All right, so we uh, we've been kind of slipping as of late and not doing uh, picks to click or takes to rake or, or what have you, uh, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but let's to crush. Okay, I like that. Crushes to crush. I mean, we'll it, it, we'll, 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 we'll work up it in our live stream. Yeah, yeah. Um, but. Let's do one for this weekend. So for all three games, who do you think is going to have the best series at the plate for the Mariners? I've done very well in these, so. I've uh, actually I, done well in I these. Know, I, I'm trying to figure out who do I want to curse. Um, <laughs> I don't hmm, – this is a tough one. Um, I mean, if you just want to curse someone, I mean, you're you're a Dylan probably, Moore hater. <laughs> I mean, I probably should take like Jared Kelnick because he's not going to do anything anyways. Um, I don't. Who who are you taking? You go first. Let me think about this for a second. All right. So the the Lazardo matchup kind of scares me, but I'm going to go Jesse Winker. He said he set the ball really hard lately. Um, I mean, it's going like the breakout is going to come at some point. We know this. We know this for a fact. It is going to come at some point. Why not now? Please make it now. Let's not let's not end the month of April where he's still not getting the results that he quite frankly deserves. So I think he uh, I think he finally finds some grass. I think he finally finds some seats as well in this one, and uh, he's going to have a good series. Maybe not tomorrow against Lazardo, but uh, against Hernandez and maybe Alcantara. I mean, if someone is going to break through against Alcantara. Might as well be one of the most underrated hitters in all of baseball. I guess sure. one of the most underrated pitchers in all of baseball. Sure. Um, hmm. I want to. I want to take Luis Torrens, who is um, solid. I was actually kind of thinking Torrens as well. He's he's starting tonight behind the dish. He's probably going to DH tomorrow against the lefty mm-hmm. uh, with Murphy catching, and then hopefully Hanniger in right field. But if not, then 
See, the, my only my only hesitation with taking Terrence is that there's a decent chance he only catches one game, and so mm. that point doesn't really matter. Uh, I feel like France is the obvious choice here, so I don't want to do that. How about I'm gonna I'm gonna say that JP Crawford, the P stands for power, continues to hit. I'm gonna say JP hits two home runs this Whoa. weekend. Yeah, all right, two home runs right. for JP Crawford. Uh, it'll be the only two hits he gets, and of course, in both of those games, he'll commit a really boneheaded error because that's just what JP does now. So um, it kind of goes hand in hand, right? It's like if he hits a home run, the defense like the defense regresses by like a grade and a half, and then <laughs> it, <laughs> but it if he doesn't like hit it. a home run, he's like Gold Glover. That's yeah, just, <laughs> I mean, just remember JP Crawford, just power Crawford. There you go. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So I'll I'll take JP. Mm. You know we're out of time. Yeah, I'll just stick with it. No, do I do I want to curse JP? I like <laughs> Mitch. Han- I'm taking Mitch Haniger. There we go. Wow. I mean that that's a pretty safe bet to curse him since he's uh, you know still recovering. <laughs> you know, so but All right, Ty, also, fine. also Pick a you between one through nine, uh, six. Okay, you, a Eugenio Suarez is my guy. Okay, good vibes only. Oh no, we cursed him though. Curse vibes only. No, fine. Adam Frazier breakout series. There you go. <laughs> Adam Frazier is. Going we're just to have we're just two... naming every player on the Mariners. I know. So. <laughs> all right, all right. Seriously, seriously, because um, I know we got to go, and I know you want a real answer, so you can make fun of me when it epically fails. Mm-hmm. I think Adam Frazier is going to get three game series. I think Frazier is going to get six hits and Whoa. two walks. All in right, the series. Let's do it. I would love to see it. All right. Well, on that note, that's going to do it for our show. Uh, thank you so much for joining us here on the Locked On Mariners podcast. For Colby Patton, I'm Tidying Gonzalez. Be sure to give us a follow on Twitter at LO underscore Mariners. You can follow me at Dane Gonzalez. That's D-A-N-E. G-N-Z-L-Z, and Colby at CPAT11, that's C-P-A-T-1-1. You can also find all that stuff in the description of this episode. And thank you again for making us your first listen of the day, just like you do here every day. We greatly appreciate your support. Now make your second listen of the day. Locked on MLB, that's where Paul Francis Sullivan, and please call him Sully, brings you his unique perspective on the Major League's present and past. It's free wherever you get your podcasts just like us. So have yourself a beautiful baseball day and a beautiful baseball weekend, and we will see you on Monday. Peace, go M's.